Hello, America. I'm Mark Levin, and this is Life, Liberty, and Levin. What do we do in a constitutional republic when we have a media that dresses up as the free press, but really isn't what was intended by our framers of the Constitution? Oh, the press is free, but the press is free to lie, to censor, to cover up, to omit, to project, to create narratives. And that's what the American press has done. That's what they've done to Donald Trump. That's what they've done to conservatives. That's what they do about everything. It is a radical element within our society. It is part of the Democrat Party and it is part of the American Marxist and now slash Islamist mentality. And I don't need to do a whole lot to prove it. Just spend a few hours doing research. In fact, I wrote an entire book on it, on freedom of the press. But I want to get into some specifics with you because at times like this, when there's an obvious right versus wrong, good versus evil, people trying to exterminate other people, at a time like this, you can really see who the culprits are, who the reprobates are. But a little bit of context first. Let's start with the New York Times. I wrote a book, chapter six, on the New York Times during the Holocaust. Deborah Lipstadt, who actually works for Biden right now, why she hasn't resigned yet, that's on her conscience, called Beyond Belief, an outstanding book on how the New York Times covered up the Holocaust. Buried by the Times, fantastic professor, Laura Leff, the Holocaust and America's most important newspaper. Dr. David S. Wyman, since deceased, fantastic individual. He wrote the first, The Abandonment of the Jews, America and the Holocaust, 1941 to 1945. You can see these are serious books, serious people. And it wasn't even just the Holocaust. Another great book, Stalin's Apologist, Walter Durandi, by S.J. Taylor. This is the New York Times. This is the New York Times. The New York Times has blood on its hands. In fact, it was so bad that on its 150th anniversary, the former managing editor of the New York Times felt, well, maybe I ought to write something about it. Max Frankel, November 14, 2001, 22 years ago. And his first paragraph is, and then there was failure, none greater than the staggering, staining failure of the New York Times to depict Hitler's methodical extermination of the Jews of Europe as a horror beyond all other horrors in World War II, a Nazi war within the war crying out for illumination. So the question has, is, has the New York Times learned anything? This from Tablet by Professor Leff, the New York Times is Nazi correspondent. At the outbreak of the Second World War, the New York Times bureau chief from Berlin, Guido Enderis, was known to sit in the bar of the city's famous Alden Hotel, spouting, quote, a loudmouth defense of Nazism, unquote, eventually provoking another reporter to complain to the Times publisher, quote, isn't it about time that the New York Times did something about its Nazi correspondent, unquote? But the Times had no intention of doing anything about Enderis. In fact, it vowed his close connections to the Nazi government, as it had throughout the 1930s. All American newspapers found reporting in Nazi Germany difficult. The government tightly controlled information and harangued and threatened reporters who managed to publish what it didn't like. The Nazi regime also didn't hesitate to use its strongest weapons, banning a newspaper from distribution in Germany, kicking a reporter out of the country or denying a reporter's reentry. As a putatively Jewish-owned newspaper, the New York Times considered itself a special target. Bureau Chief Enders' job, therefore, was, quote, administering reasonably soothing syrup, unquote, to Nazi officials, as another Times reporter puts it. When it comes to the fundamentals of life versus death, the extermination of human beings by a regime. The New York Times sided with, quote unquote, the regime in the manner in which it reported or didn't report information. And it's doing exactly the same thing today, despite its phony apology in 2001. Here's the New York Post. New York Times hires Hitler praising Salman Hiji to cover the Hamas war. A New York Times reporter came under fire last year for praising Adolf Hitler. In multiple resurfaced Facebook posts, was rehired by the gray lady to cover the Israel-Palestine war. 
When it was uncovered, they dropped the guy. But then enough time passed, so they bring him back. And now, with October 7th, they want him to help present information to you about what's going on in the war. Palestinian filmmaker Salama Hiji hailed the Nazi leaders recently as 2018 in a post on Facebook when he shared a photo of himself captioned that he was, quote, in a state of harmony as Hitler was during the Holocaust, unquote. That same year, Hiji was hired by The Times as a freelance journalist and worked on a slew of visual investigations published by the organization through 2021, including one on an Israeli airstrike that killed 44 people. His 2018 post, including a 2012 Facebook post where he wrote, quote, how great you are, Hitler, in Arabic, alongside a photoshopped image of Hitler seemingly taking a selfie. At the time, he, she didn't appear to be working for the Times anymore, and it's since taken down his controversial pro-Hitler post. So why did they rehire him? Out of all the people? New York Times, a few years back. Remember this anti-Semitic cartoon? Well, they apologized for it, but it was followed soon thereafter by this anti-Semitic cartoon with the Prime Minister of Israel with a selfie taking a picture of himself. You see his eyes with a uh, Star of David on a tablet. The New York Times is loaded with Israel hating anti-Semites, just as it's loaded with American hating reporters, opinion writers, and so forth. You have to ask yourself, if you're a reporter for the New York Times, you have any connection to the New York Times, aren't you ashamed of yourself? With the blood that this newspaper has on its hands, and I can't do it right now, but also 1932, Walter Durante was their correspondent in Moscow. He was Stalin's mouthpiece for 12 years. They knew it. And in 1932, Stalin slaughtered millions of Ukrainians. Something about the Russians slaughtering Ukrainians, you know. But they did it then, too. And the New York Times kept them. And not only that, he got a Pulitzer Prize. But the New York Times isn't alone. Here we have CNN, the Jewish noon syndicate, CNN's anti-Semitic disgrace. A CNN analysis explains anti-Semitism by engaging in it. CNN international platforms anti-Semite to accuse Jews of racism. Christiana Amanpour and the institutionalization of media bias. CNN reporting Palestinian grief, but omitting Palestinian celebration of murder after October 7th. CNN's mea culpa on Al-Hali Hospital. Remember the fake headline from the New York Times? They weren't alone. CNN, too. But they slowly walked back. Then they apologized, but they really didn't apologize. They're not alone. MSNBC, among the worst of them. They have a host there by the name of Mehdi Hassan. A few years back, he was at an event and he spoke his true feelings and it was videotaped. And he said, and of course, the kafar, the disbelievers, the atheists who remain deaf and stubborn to the teachings of Islam, the rational message of Quran, they're described in the Quran as, quote, a people of no intelligence. Allah describes them as not of normal morality, as people of no intelligence, no morality, people of no intelligence, because they're incapable of the intellectual effort it requires to shake off those blind prejudices, to shake off those easy assumptions about the world, about the existence of God. In this respect, the Quran describes the atheists as cattle, as cattle are those who grow the crops and do not stop and wonder about this world. All these ulama unanimously agree that at the very minimum, if Yazid was not a kafir, then at the very minimum, he was a fasik, a transgressor, a breaker of Islamic laws, a corrupt individual, a tyrant, a killer, a drunkard, a dog lover, a music lover, a homosexual, a pedophile, a sexual deviant, someone who slept with his own mother. These are their views. Not my view, he says. He since apologized. They always apologize. The New York Times is endlessly apologizing. He's now a host on MSNBC. MSNBC host Ali Velshi's rabid, reckless, anti-Israel rant. Jewish News Syndicate. There wasn't violence. There wasn't bloodshed. MSNBC whitewashes Al Sharpton's history. The Daily Wire. MSNBC host Joy Reid criticized Jews, among others. Anti-Semitic rants. Homophobic rants racist rants, anti-American rants. 
That was what they found on her blog. First, she denied it was hers. She said somebody put it up and used her name. Of course, that was a lie. And now she's a weekday primetime host at MSNBC. I mean, honestly, they can't do better than this. Let's look at Media Matters, the Soros front group that he helped create. Media Matters is the research arm of the Democrat Party slash Hamas supporting slash America hating media in this country. That doesn't mean all the media. But I've given you examples of many in the media, have I not? Media Matters president, this is from the Daily Caller, wrote blog posts about Japs, Jewry, and trannies. It's so foul what this Media Matters president, Angelo Carasone, wrote. I can't even read it to you. And this is the guy, and this is the operation, if you go to their webpage now, that's trying to destroy Fox and Rumble and individual hosts, radio hosts, yours truly, and the media, the media use this as a source. CNN uses it, MSNBC uses it, New York Times, Washington Post, all the rest of them use it as a source. Why am I telling you all this? Because as I said at the start, when you have a situation like we have today, where you have the greatest genocide and atrocities against a people, the Jewish people in Israel, since the Holocaust. And I have to sit here and sit on radio and explain what the media are doing, how they're lying in support of Hamas, how they're lying in support of terrorist regimes, how they're lying against Israel, how they use anti-Semitic guests and hopes and, and hosts. That's pretty sick. And now you know why this media cannot be trusted, the vast majority of it, when they attack Trump, when they lie about the trials, when they lie about so much because they have an agenda, they have an ideology. And thanks to the Supreme Court, under the New York Times decision versus Sullivan, most of this is protected. It wasn't protected at our founding when you actually could bring libel suits and win under state law. The court decided in the early 1960s that this was free speech and it was to be protected at all costs. Fine. The government doesn't interfere. But what about individuals or groups of individuals? They can't reply. They have no standing to do anything, which is why it gets worse and worse and worse and worse. And frankly, which is why it's an honor to work here at Fox, and an honor to work at Westwood One on my radio show with this kind of evil and hate, these kinds of smears and libels which occur on a fairly regular basis in these newspapers, these cable channels, these network shows, simply does not occur. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.